Hey everybody, Jamie here, and lately I've been wondering if I should change the name of my show from Do It Girl to Duct Tape Girl. Over the past few years, I've showed you how to make a duct tape tote bag, flower pen, braided bracelet, and bows. Are you not satisfied? Yeah, me neither. Get ready as I show you how to make a duct tape wallet clutch. Let's do it, girl. Okay, so for this craft, you're going to need duct tape, packing tape, a pair of scissors, a cutting tool and cutting mat, a ruler and writing utensil, and a sample card, from a license to a credit card to a gift card. Now there are several ways of making a duct tape wallet, especially when you change out the color, pattern, and style. I also know that there's a bunch of bifold wallet tutorials out there, which is why I thought I'd switch things up by making a wallet clutch. All right, enough of the introductions. Intro ductations? Never mind. Step one. The first step is to make duct tape panels, which will serve as the base of your wallet where you're going to attach all of your duct tape accessories. Roll out three eight inch strips of duct tape. Overlap them together until your tape is a little more than four inches tall. Flip this piece over and repeat the same technique on the back, sticky side to sticky side, using a different color of tape if desired. When finished, use your ruler and scissors or cutting tool to trim your panel into a four by seven inch rectangle. Repeat this step four more times times to make five panels total. Step two. The next step is to transform your panels into pockets for your clutch. Take two panels and place them on top of one another with the same color facing inwards. Roll out a new piece of duct tape four inches long and another seven inches long to match the length and width of your panel. You'll divide these new strips right down the middle into two identical skinny strips. Take one of your skinny seven inch strips and place half of it onto the bottom edge of your panel. Then flip your panel over in order to press down the other half of the strip, locking everything in place. Cut off any excess tape from the corners. Now make sure to hang on to that other seven inch strip because we'll be using it later. Now repeat the same technique with your four inch strips, folding them up and over both sides of your panel to lock them in place before cutting off the excess tape. Now you have a duct tape pocket. I'd start celebrating, but we need to do this again to make two pockets total. So now's a good time to remind you that you can switch up your colors and patterns for your panels any which way you want. I'm just sticking with two colors because I find that that gives me a more uniform look. Boom, two pockets, now we're talking. Well, I guess I've already been talking this entire time, haven't I? But you knew what I meant, right? Anyway, let's make some card holders. Step three. Roll out two strips of duct tape about four inches long. Place them together sticky side to sticky side with a half of an inch of overlap on either side. Fold in one sticky side so that you're left with just one sticky side exposed. Now if you wanted two colors for your holder, again roll out two pieces of duct tape four inches long. This time, however, you'll stick one directly on top of the other. Roll out another four inch strip in your new color and then place that strip on top of your main color, leaving a half of an inch of sticky side exposed. Now you have two ways of making a card holder. Repeat this technique to create as many card holders as you like. I think between three to six works best. All right, it's time to place these card holders into your clutch. With your pocket facing vertically, place your card holder at the bottom, lining up the holder's sticky side face down to the wallet's edge. Here's where you'll slip in a sample card to make sure you've got enough space between holders. I think about a half of an inch of space works best. Continue to line up and stick down your holders until you get to the top of the wallet, making sure that your top holder is low enough that your card doesn't stick out from the wallet's edge. Trim any excess duct tape with your scissors or cutting tool. Now if you wanted, you could also create a horizontal pocket as opposed to a vertical one. With your pocket facing horizontally, place your holder at the bottom corner of your pocket, sticky side down to the edge, using the same technique with your sample card to measure out your remaining holders. Here's what it looks like when finished. No matter which way you choose, you need to lock those holders into place, unless you want this to happen. I didn't think so. Here's where you're going to want to retrieve that skinny seven inch piece I told you about earlier. Divide your skinny strip in half in order to make two new super skinny strips. Place in a sample card in order to make sure that your pockets remain the correct width. Then place half of your strip on one edge of the holder, flip everything over, and press down on the other edge. Do this for both sides. Just make sure for the side where the pocket opens, you place your duct tape inside the pocket and not the outside. Otherwise, you're going to be sealing your pocket shut and transforming it back into a panel. Trim off any excess 
excess tape, and there you go, your card holder panel is complete. Since there's still some space on our clutch, let me show you how to make a see-through ID holder. Nab your packing tape and roll out two strips a little over seven inches long. Overlap them slightly to form one piece, and then fold it over on itself, sticky side to sticky side. And there's nothing like using clear and therefore invisible looking material when trying to explain a lengthy tutorial. <laughs> Sorry guys, hopefully you're still able to follow along. Place in your card and then trim your packing tape so that you're left with about a half of an inch to an eighth of an inch of space on all sides. All that's left to do is cut out appropriately sized strips of duct tape to attach to the sides of your newly formed ID holder to your panel. Obviously you do need to leave one side free so that way you can place in your ID, but I still added in a final strip of duct tape to the edge of the packing tape for decorating purposes. Step five. Okay, so you now know how to make panels, transform them into pockets, add in card holders, and an ID holder. All that's left to do is put all the pieces together. Lay down your panels with your pockets facing the same direction. Roll out a strip of duct tape the same length as your clutch and then divide it in half. With one strip centered in the middle of your pieces, sticky side up, connect your pockets together, leaving a small gap in between so your panels have room to bend. Then take your other piece of duct tape and place it down the middle of the front of your panels. Again, make sure that you place this piece inside your open pocket as opposed to the outside in order to avoid sealing the pocket shut. And now your bifold wallet is complete. Except that we're not making a bifold wallet, we're making a clutch. All right, let's keep going. The last step is to create a closure for your clutch. For that, you'll need that fifth and final panel that you made during step one. With your clutch face down, attach your flap closure to the outside top of your open pocket using an appropriately sized piece of duct tape. You can simply attach your panel straight to your clutch or feel free to cut out a fun design ahead of time. I folded my panel in half and cut out a quarter of a circle in order to achieve a symmetrical semicircle flap. Once your duct tape flap is attached, all that's left to do is to choose how you want to keep your clutch closed. I'm a big fan of using snap buttons ever since making a leather cuff bracelet was so hinky from Smosh Games, but you could do a Velcro closure or just simply put down a skinny strip of duct tape for your flap to fold into. Phew, and that's it. I know it seems intimidating, but once you get started, it's a lot easier than it looks. Plus, you could add in even more than I just showed you, like adding in a changed purse by following the instructions from my fabric clutch purse tutorial, or adding in a third panel in order to make a tri-fold wallet, or you could just add in a duct tape strap or handle in order to carry your clutch around easily. At the very least, I hope that my tutorial has given you some inspiration in order to dive into all things duct tape. You'll be fine as long as you just stick with it. I haven't made a pun this whole video, guys, okay? Just give me this one. How did you make your duct tape wallet? Tweet me at Jamie Petito, Instagram me at Hey Jamie, or just tell me all about it in the comments below. We did it, girl. I'm Jamie, and you're on girl.com. For more tutorials just like this one, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And here's where I usually edit, but I'm not going to because I really want you guys to subscribe. We're almost at 200K, you guys. Woo! Have you clicked yet?